As a proper adult, he ought to check if it contained any content that was not suitable for children. But this was still better than looking at it and saying, it's too specialized, I don't understand it, and then handing it to Kino. Kino did not seem to realize that Suzuki Satori was abasing himself in his heart and thanked him. Then, she put on the monocle and began reading. It would seem the monocle was effective, because Kino began perusing the contents of the parchments. She read in silence, reaching for the next parchment after finishing the first. In order not to disturb Kino, Suzuki Satori moved aside. There was nothing he, as a person who had never considered magic to be a field of study, could learn from them. From time to time, Kino would mention a question about magical principles to Suzuki Satori it was just confusing. He did not feign knowledge either, instead replying with a simple I don't know. Even though Suzuki Satori did not seem to know anything, Kino did not seem to distrust him. After all, the fact of his overwhelming power was on full display, and there were some classes which controlled magic by feeling rather than theoretical knowledge. She must have taken him for one of those feel-based magic casters. As he looked at Kino's small frame, buried in her books, Suzuki Satori began to lay out the items he had discovered on the ground. At the same time, he used his spells to see what kind of magic was imbued into those items. The first one he investigated was a staff. After seeing the magic it contained, he called out to Kino, despite feeling a little embarrassed. Excuse me, but could you come over and take a look at this item? Ah, yes. Kino hurriedly turned to look his way. About these it. Ah. Kino stood up from her seat and ran over to the items, where she picked it up. This is it. As long as we have this. The look of delight on Kino seemed like it would revert to normal from time to time, but it was unconsciously replaced by joy again. Is this the resurrection item you mentioned earlier? The notion in his heart had been validated, this was an item the undead being had abandoned when he invaded. This was one of the nation's treasures, along with the mask of Elvia Horton, the robe of the first Invern, and the gauntlet of the Griffin Lord. It was a transparent wand, carved out of a gigantic crystal and further worked upon. Its name was Lost White. If what she said yesterday was right, then Suzuki Satoru believed that the spell contained within it ought to be the fifth tier divine spell raised dead. But according to his investigations just now, the spell's effects were slightly different. Or rather, it looked like a wand, it should be usable as a wand, but fundamentally, it was something else entirely. It felt like a bit of a shame to just use it like that. However, while Suzuki Satoru also had resurrective items which contained higher tier spells, he had no intention of taking them out until yesterday. One of the reasons was because he was not sure if resurrection magic followed the same mechanics in this world. But it was true that he had covered that part up. Suzuki Satoru was not nearly thick-skinned enough to be frank about that. However, Momonga now had no skin to speak of. Yes. Now I'm sure everyone can be. Kino bit her lip for a moment, probably because there was no way to save everyone with a limited use item. No, it was obvious that a powerful item would have some kind of limits on its usage. Kino was now in a position where she would have to decide who to save. Even so, we'll need to destroy them first, before we'll get a chance to restore them to human beings. Then how can I bring them back to life? A, how about ending their life as a zombie and then trying to resurrect them with this item? I see, we wouldn't be able to test it out in the castle, then Suzuki Satori explained to a mystified Kino. While my knowledge of this nation might differ from this one, if we destroy a zombie here pardon me, if we kill someone here, it's possible that we might incur the hostility of all the surrounding zombies. In order to avoid that, we need to take our test zombie far away where it won't generate hostility. However, I have no idea how far that would be. Do you have any ideas? Huh? Ah, yes, is it like that? It isn't. The two of them looked at each other. This was not so much a divide in their understanding of the world so much as neither of them not being sure what the problem was. Therefore, they needed to discuss the gains and losses of such an action together. In the end, they decided to let Kino finish reading all the books first. This was a decision made in the hope that one of them would give her an answer, entrusting their luck to the heavens. After seeing Kino pick her books up again, Suzuki Satoru went back to examining the remaining items from that undead creature. As Suzuki Satoru picked up a silver necklace, he knitted his non-existent eyebrows. This isn't a magic item, it's an enchanted necklace. Is this kind of accessory in style? One could not equip multiple magic items to the same item slot. While one could wear many magical items around their neck, he had heard from Kino that only the powers from the item that had been last put on would be usable, so it would seem that principle was the same in this world as it was in Yggdrasil. While he did not particularly mind if that undead being was the sort of fellow who adorned himself with pointless ornamentation, it did not seem to be the case. He did not have any other non-magical items besides this necklace. There must be some meaning to this. There was a circular silver object depending from the necklace. It looked slightly worn, but he could clearly see what looked like symbols and letters carved into it. Is there some significance to this? Is it a key for something? 
No, it might be a holy symbol of some kind, for an undead creature. But was this some core item with religious significance? There seems to be something on the back. It looks like some kind of guild badge. Ah. Oh. Does this imply that it belongs to some organization? He was unsure of the meaning of this, so all he could do was conjecture. However, it would be bad if it belonged to some group. Well I'm wary because it's possible. I just have to pay that Kino knows the meaning of that emblem. Kino was speed reading, flipping rapidly through the books. From the side, he could see a tense and frightened look on her face. He probably would not be hearing good news from her. Kino-san, I'm sorry to interrupt while you're busy, but could you help me take a look at this necklace? Huh? Ah, yes, let's see, it doesn't look like letters. Are they, marks? I see. Then what about things on your end? There was a pile of books that had been read and a pile of books which had not been read. He had asked because the former dwarf the latter. Kino sighed heavily. It was a sigh which sounded like it came from a company employee who would be working overnight. It did not sound like a sigh that ought to have come from a youthful looking girl. Firstly, those books concerned various kinds of magical knowledge. The parchments, on the other hand, contained matters that the undead being was looking into messily written research notes. But they were too complex, so it's possible I might have misinterpreted them to some extent. Kino rounded her shoulders in dejection. Her voice sounded gloomy too. It's just, that powerful undead being that I thought was the mastermind doesn't seem to have anything to do with the people of the city becoming undead. I thought so too, Suzuki Satoru Muse. That undead creature had been far too weak for someone who could turn an entire city into zombies. Well I found something that looked like a diary, it only said that the undead creature you killed was also puzzled by how everyone in the city could have turned into a zombie, and that he'd like to have investigated it if he had the time. Also, Kino looked like she was about to say something, and then she changed her mind. That's all. It didn't have anything to do with that undead being. Is that so? Then what are you going to do? Even so, I still want to see if they can be resurrected. There was a hollow determination in Kino's voice. She probably understood that it would be useless. After all, she was the one who said that there might be a possibility if they eliminated the main culprit, and now she was the one saying that the undead being that Suzuki Satori had wiped out, had nothing to do with it. That said, even if she understood, she still had to give it a try. Suzuki Satori looked at the girl and thought about a fire. It was about how even if one was alone, there was no need to put out a fire that had been prepared for others. Is that so? In that case, we won't use your parents. We'll experiment with one of the guards. Kino's face twisted as she heard the words experiment. However, she did not say anything, because she knew the pretty words would not be able to change the reality of the situation. Suzuki Satori began by opening the window and jumping out, using fly to hover in midair. From there, he memorized the location far in the distance, beyond the city limits, and teleported there. Once he reached his destination, he surveyed his surroundings with his ability, and after verifying that there were no undead around, he memorized the area and cast greater teleportation to return to Kino's side. After that, the two of them left the room. Kino led him to a guard who had apparently been quite strong in life before becoming a zombie, and then he cascade. He grabbed part of the guard's armor in order to make certain that it could not be interpreted as an attack, then dragged him into the gate. And so, the three of them were transported outside the city. Just as Kino said, I'll do as Suzuki Satoru killed the zombie in one blow, without saying a word. He did not smash his head to bits with a crushing weapon. Instead, he lopped his head off with a magically conjured sword. Now then, can you use that item? Alright. The pure white light within the wand moved to the corpse of the zombie guard. The corpse slowly got to his feet, but that was not a sign that it had returned to life. It was simply a zombie moving once more. Kino lowered her head, and Suzuki Satoru, who had been worried about being attacked, let his caution fade. The zombie just walked around aimlessly, with no signs of hostility. Presumably, any aggro that had been generated had faded with its death. What should we do? Suzuki Satoru asked. After a brief period of introspection, Kino raised her head and looked Suzuki Satori in the eye. Satori-sama. Do you think that I can restore everyone if I work hard enough on my research? Her voice was ponderous and heavy. It was the voice of someone who did not even believe herself. It was the voice of someone whose only hope had been crushed to bits. Suzuki Satori thought for a while. He could try to comfort her or simply to gloss it over. He could also try to steer the topic back to an appropriate direction. However, he compared it to his own image from several days ago, and then he discarded all those selfish notions. He quickly inhaled, and then Suzuki Satori met Kino's gaze before speaking. 